conference of this nature is to enable all of us and myself particularly to raise the bar to never be content however you might see your past or your present but that the future can be better than what has been. In a world that is used to being torn apart by the injustice of laws applied to some and not to others, the pandemic brought us together under public health laws that apply to everyone. In a world that is used to being torn apart by socioeconomic inequalities because between developed and developing nations, the pandemic brought us together to share the resources necessary for weathering the shared storms of loss and grief. In a world that is used to take the teachers, healthcare workers or providers, cleaners, shopkeepers and police officers for granted, the pandemic brought us together by halting the non-essential work most of us do, and increasing our dependency on the essential services these professionals quietly provide. And most importantly, in a world that is used to ignoring the inequalities suffered by girls and women in every nation of the world, the pandemic brought us together by exposing those inequalities and demanding our response. Eight months ago, 50,000 people from around the world convened virtually at the Generation Equality Forum in Paris and resolved to make this a more just world for women. To achieve this, $40 billion was pledged towards a five-year action plan to accelerate gender equality by focusing on six thematic areas to work on. Gender-based violence, economic justice and rights, bodily autonomy and sexual and reproductive health and rights, feminist action for climate justice, technology and innovation for gender equality, and feminist movements and leadership. And to my delight, not only was Malawi active in her participation, but was chosen to lead the pursuit of the sixth thematic area of promoting fem feminist movements and leadership, along with Canada and the Netherlands. As a nation, we have taken this leadership role seriously. I myself have signaled to the world our seriousness by taking some steps to end institutional gender inequalities at the highest level of government, including the appointment of the women to 41% of the seats in my cabinet, the appointment of women to head 45% of Malawi's foreign missions, and the appointment of women to 50% of the offices I have filled in the judiciary. And I will do everything I can to champion the election of women to no less than half of the seats in parliament during the next election. It can be done. I say that it can be done because I'm determined to live up to the values to which I committed my country at the Paris Forum. Under the feminist movements and leadership theme, I pledge to fund and support diverse feminist activities, organizations, funds, and movements. I also pledge to promote, expand, and protect civic space for feminist action, organizing and mobilization, 
advancing and increasing the meaningful participation, leadership, and decision-making power of women and girls. Under economic justice and rights theme, I pledge to increase women's economic empowerment by transforming the care economy, expand decent work and employment in formal and informal economies, increase women's access to and control over productive resources, and lastly, to promote gender transformative economies and fiscal stimulus. And we're already in pursuit of these things. Last month, my administration passed a national budget with many interventions for advancing the cause of gender equality, including the removal of value-added tax from sanitary pads and our quest to make it easier for girls to stay in school during their menstrual cycle. I also launched a digital platform that profiles the achievements and qualifications of professional women in order to make it easier for employers to find qualified women to recruit to senior positions. As that platform gets expanded, I am inspired to see how blessed Malawi is to be a land of great and accomplished women. And it is fitting that the first ever Generation Equality Conference is being hosted here in Malawi, where we celebrate women. And after all, this is the land of Dr. Joyce Banda. The second female president on the whole continent of Africa. This is the land of Catherine Gordanihara, the first female speaker of Malawi's parliament. This is the land of Dr. Tamiwe Tomoka, first, uh, Malawi's first female anatomical pathologist. It is also the land of Dr. Tamara Piri, a leading specialist running the medicine department at the largest referral hospital in southern Malawi. It is the land of uh, Dr. Rachel Sirande, Malawi's leading expert in all things digital and big data. This is the land of Dr. Tapio Chisinyasuru, who heads the Gender Policy and Development Division at the African Union. This is the land of Dr. Virginia Kamoa, who is a senior officer working on menstrual health at the United Nations. It's the land of Dr. Ngei Kanyongoro, Professor of Law, Dr. Koliwe Mkandavide, Professor of Veterinary Medicine, Dr. Margaret Sequesi, Professor of Development, Dr. Fingani Mpande, Professor of Medicine, and Dr. Kaboni Whitney Gondwe, Professor of Nursing. I said, this is the land of all of these, and if I had time, I would narrate all manner of people that are contributing to my progress. I just witnessed, even outside this hall, certain booths, women doing all manner of stuff. Stories that never get told. Stories that inspire and give hope to Malawians that in this country, something is happening that is helping someone's life and it needs to be celebrated. Because this is the land of the ever rising sun because we're a hopeful people. This is Malawi, the land of women who lead and men who celebrate them as they lead. And so, President George Banda and President Johnson Sirleaf, 
and all of you dignitaries. Today, I accept this award in honor of all these and more women who are doing their part to build a new Malawi of gender equality.